All right, I want to talk a minute about uh, limiting reactants here for a second. And basically, limiting reactant kind of goes hand in hand a little bit with stoichiometry. Um, we learned that in a balanced equation like this up here, um, talking about uh, the ingredients to make a pizza is a balanced equation. We learned that for every you know one crust, I can say there's one pizza, one pizza. And I can say for every two cups of cheese, two cheese, there's five uh, ounces of tomato sauce. Sauce, right? All of this stuff is interchangeable in this balanced equation to make a pizza, right? Well, limiting reactant is going to use those things um, to find out if you have a list of ingredients or a list of compounds in a uh, balanced equation, which one is limiting the reaction from happening. So if I have, and let me give you an example here, if I've got um, four crust, 10 cups of cheese, 15 ounces of sauce, uh, what is the limiting reactant? What, what ingredient do I have the least of that I need to make uh, X amount of pizzas? So basically how you figure this out is you just figure out how many pizzas, um, if you had excess of everything else's, how many pizzas each ingredient that they're giving you would make. And whichever pizza, uh, whichever ingredient which yields the least amount of pizzas is going to be your limiting reactant. So I have four crusts. Let me just show you what I mean. I have four crust, and I know, based off this balanced equation here, that for every one crust, I have one pizza. And I know that I have 10 cups, 10 cups of uh, cheese, and for every times, for every uh, two cups of cheese, two cheese, and let me even do these in different colors so you can see the difference here. Cheese times for every two cups of cheese, put an H there, cheese, you have uh, one pizza. And I have 15 sauce, cups of ounces of sauce, and I know that for every five ounces of sauce, I have uh, one pizza. And what's my limiting reactant for all this, right? So all we do is now that we've we've gotten our formula straight um, on our conversion factor straight on them, so we just figure, we punch it in on the calculator and figure it out. So we've got four crust, and we know that for every one pizza, we've got one crust. So that one's kind of easy. That's going to equal, <clears throat> that's going to equal four pizzas. Right? And then we've got, on the other one, we've got ten cups of cheese, times, uh, oops, let me grab 10, 10 times 1 divided by 2. Oops, I don't think I did that right. <clears throat> 10 times 1 divided by 2. So that's going to equal 5 pizzas. So this equals 5 pizzas. And then we know we have 15 uh, ounces of sauce. Uh, and for every one pizza, that or five ounces of sauce, we have one pizza. So that's going to be three pizzas. Fifteen divided by five is going to be three. So that is three pizzas. So it looks like the fewest number of pizzas is three, which comes from our 15 ounces of sauce. So we know that only having 15 ounces of sauce with all these new list of ingredients here um, that that is our limiting reactant because with only, with 15 ounces of sauce we can only make three pizzas. So 15 ounces of sauce is our limiting reactant. It's our limiting reactant. <clears throat> so now that we found out our limiting reactant, let's take a look at another thing. All right. So we know that 15 ounces of sauce 
uh, will produce three pizzas, right? That, that concept, looking at 15 ounces of sauce based on this balanced equation, is our theoretical yield, all right? Three pizzas is what is called our theoretical radical yield. We know that in theory, <clears throat> if I follow the recipe just right, and I use every ounce of this tomato sauce, and I use it, and all the planets and the stars align just right, and I'm a good chef, and I'm in a good mood that day, or whatever, um, that I can, in theory, produce three pizzas with 15 ounces of sauce and all these other ingredients, right? That's our theoretical yield. Well, let's say, you know, the stars and the planet didn't align that day, and I only produced two pizzas. I only produced two pizzas. Maybe I didn't uh, end up being, I wasn't able to use all the 15 ounces of sauce because, you know, when working in a lab or in a kitchen, you know, uh, things aren't always perfect. Maybe some got stuck in the container that I had it in or just whatever. Um, I, I was only able to produce two pizzas, okay? Um, once we know the theoretical yield by doing this this process right here, uh, we can then go do the experiment, go make the pizzas, and, and have something that's called the actual yield. This is the actual yield. That's our what's called our actual yield. Well, once I have our actual yield and our theoretical yield, I can make something that's called our percent yield. And a percent yield in chemistry is just something... Um, that you've in a, you've taken a balanced equation of some kind, you've gone done the experiment in the, in the lab, you figured out in theory how much of a compound or a substance that that can produce, and then you've recorded the data after doing the experiment of what you actually produced. Then you want to see how close to uh, you know I guess perfection uh, you were, so you do something called a percent yield. And a percent yield, percent yield, percent yield just equals the actual yield over the theoretical yield. Theoretical yield. So in this experiment, <clears throat> we would have. I actually made two pizzas and I could have made if I would have done you know followed this equation perfectly and all the planets aligned or whatever I could have made three pizzas and when I divide those two that will give me my percent yield two divided by 3 equals 66. So, and well, you have to mul multiply it by 100, so it's really 0 0.66 times 100 equals 66%. So my actual, or my percent yield was 66%. So I wasn't terribly uh, accurate, or I wasn't terribly close to perfection whenever I only made two pizzas. And that is all there is to limiting reactants, per actual yield and theoretical yield, and then percent yield. You can plug this in to the same equation we were doing in the stoichiometry videos um, with uh, 6 CO2 here and, and uh, 6 H2O and all that. And I kind of have one made up here. <clears throat> Let's say um, let me just get rid of this stuff right here. This right here. Let's say we've got this balanced equation. Whoa. Don't want to go that far. Let's say we've got this balanced equation right here, the one we were working with in stoichiometry videos. And let's say, you know, I start with, uh, I do this reaction, and I start with 6 CO2, and I only have... Uh, I only get 0.5 uh, glucose molecules. 0.5 glucose molecules. You would say, well, in theory, 
I have 6 CO2, and for every 6 CO2, I have 1 glucose. Glucose is this, this thing right here, 1 glucose. Glucose molecule, so I should um, have 1, in theory, glucose. So you would plug your actual in here into your theoretical, this is in theory, what you should produce, one glucose, and that's going to give you a percent. In this case it would be 50 percent. So you, your percent yield was only 50 percent. And in reality, percent yields aren't really that high. We as, you know, chemists or as uh, in the lab, most of the time aren't terribly that accurate. If you're at 100%, um, you may, chances are you've probably done the uh, problem wrong. If you're greater than 100%, you've definitely done the problem wrong. And in more times than not, uh, you've flip-flopped flopped these. You know, you've put five glucose on the bottom, one glucose on top. If you remember percent yield is where it's at. Percent yield is where it's at. A over T. Actual over theoretical. That will maybe uh, help you remember it a little bit uh, also for percent yield. Um, but anyway, that is all there is to uh, limiting reactants and percent uh, yield and uh, uh, thanks for watching.